Hi everyone, this is Trevor from Astro Backyard. It's a Tuesday night, I'm here in the garage just getting set up for a night of astrophotography. I thought I would go over some new gear that I've got, show you how it works, and then uh, later I'm going to be setting up uh, behind the garage to shoot the Horsehead Nebula in the constellation Orion. If you've liked a video, commented on a video, or subscribed to my channel, I just want to thank you so much. The um, response has been overwhelming for Astro Backyard. It just started as a kind of an experiment, but it seems to have taken off. So I really appreciate that, and I just wanted to say that uh, I do get a lot of questions from all over the place through email and comments. Uh, so I'll try to do my best to answer those questions through video when I can rather than uh, replying to uh, all the emails and everything. It's a good way for me to find out exactly what you guys are looking to find out. So I hope that works for you guys. I haven't made a video since I've had my new DSLR, my primary imaging camera. And that camera is a Canon T3i, aka the uh, 600D. It was professionally modified for astrophotography uh, from a service called Astromod Canada. It's one of many of these services around. Um, you can also get it done by Gary Honus or Hap Griffin. Those are more popular choices. But uh, either way, this 600D was modified and the modification done was the full spectrum mod, which means that the IR cut filter was removed um, and now the sensor is essentially naked and um, the only kind of protection the sensor has on top of it is the uh, filters that I put in the camera. And I've been all about this lately, is using a hydrogen alpha filter. So this is the astronomic 12 nanometer uh, clip-in HA filter for uh, Canon cameras and it literally just clips in above the sensor. Um, it just, there's, n there's no uh, adapter plate or anything. It's just, it's just clipped right in there. It's not going anywhere, it won't fall out. So this is used for capturing hydrogen alpha images, uh, which is so cool if you're somewhere with a lot of light pollution like me, because it just cuts through all of that, all of those forms of wavelengths of light um, that light, light pollution is associated with and just picks up um, nebulosity basically. Uh, there's a few other benefits to it as well such as uh, small stars in, in the frame. Uh, you can shoot extremely long exposures. Uh, it's fantastic but usually people combine the H-alpha images with RGB to create a composite which I very much enjoy doing now. So that's the new camera, the T3i and the astronomic HA 12 nanometer filter. When I said combining the H alpha images with RGB, um, so because the camera needs to have a filter on it, the filter that I use uh, when not imaging H alpha is um, a light pollution filter. And right now um, we're just looking at my old Rebel XSI, uh, which of course was modded. And I've actually got it set up uh, with a regular camera lens on it right now, just riding on the back of my uh, telescope for some wide field shots. If you saw my Orion constellation shot that was recently on Instagram and Facebook, um, it was shot using this method. Uh, but so the light pollution filter is here underneath the camera lens, uh, and you can see it there. And that's the uh, Itis light pollution suppression filter from Hutech. So I'm just going to switch out the filters on these cameras here because uh, tonight uh, it's new moon and I'm going to be shooting some RGB with the T3i. Take my adapter off here. Take the lens off. This guy. Oops. Close that up. So 
with the same screwdriver, you need a little um, screwdriver to release the light pollution filter. adapter ring and the filter itself that screw right into in front of the camera sensor. So I'm going to put this in the T3i and to get the HA filter out it's actually it's much easier it just pops out just like that. So I'm going to put this I might as well I'll try some HA wide field stuff using the uh, XSI. So I might as well keep it in there rather than putting it away. And then I'm going to screw the uh, light pollution filter on the T3i. Okay, so uh, now that we've got the camera all set up, it's uh, time to go outside with the scope and set up. Should probably take about 25 minutes or so to get up and running. And then, uh, yeah, it's going to be the Horsehead Nebula in uh, RGB tonight, uh, which is uh, it's in Orion's belt. Uh, it's really close to the star Alnitak, and uh, there's a lot going on there, so I'm going to include the Flame Nebula in the shot as well. And uh, this is I'm going to be adding to some existing images I already have of this region, but I really don't have enough uh, color data to go from. Uh, so I'm hoping to get, I would love to get an hour on that tonight. So I'm going to go set up in the backyard. Okay, I'm back. Back in the garage. It's now 11.14. I'm all set up outside. And uh, man, it is, uh, that took a while. It's very uh, moist outside. The transparency and visibility is, uh, are both pretty bad tonight. But I'm desperate to get out, so... Uh, I don't care. Um, but yeah, everything went rather smoothly. Um, the alignment went well. The benefit of the Horsehead Nebula, it's got that bright star on attack. So that helps when you're focusing. You can use the live view focus because it's so bright. Uh, same goes for framing it up. You, you would align on attack in the, in the right spot on your frame. And uh, for me, it was just a matter of matching it up to uh, my previous version. And so I just used that as a reference to try and just match it up. And uh, so I'm going to be adding to this, this version. So I also noticed a few clouds rolling by, so uh, hopefully that doesn't spoil my night. But uh, now I wanted to show you something pretty cool. Uh, I can actually control the laptop outside from the laptop inside. So basically I'm controlling the laptop outside uh, from my laptop here using TeamViewer, which is a free software. It's like a go-to meeting type of software where you can remotely control your computer from somewhere else. And it's great um, because I could just be inside controlling, uh, basically almost controlling everything running my telescope, camera-wise anyway. Uh, toasty warm inside the house, which is great uh, with the winter coming up. So let's, let, let's have a look here uh, at what I'm looking at here in the garage. So I've got uh, Team Viewer running, uh, which is a free software. Just uh, Google it. You can download it. Uh, very easy to use. And basically, what I'm looking at here is the uh, screen that's on my laptop uh, outside of the garage in the backyard, uh, running the camera. So you can see I'm on uh, frame seven of thirty here at uh, three and a half minute exposures at uh, ISO 1600. The sensor's uh, at a pretty warm 19 degrees because it's it's actually unseasonably warm tonight for some reason. It's I think it's about 10 degrees rather than the, the normal, you know, below zero for this time of year. Uh, so again, this is the uh, the new Canon T3i. And uh, so it's really cool. I, I'm I'm able to look at uh, I'm able to look at my frames here, although that last frame didn't look so good at all. I think we've got some clouds rolling in. And, um, yeah, I'm going to have to go have a look at that. 
I can still see all of them stuck there, but I think some some clouds rolled in. Um, but so these these frames might look a little scary to you. They they look totally blown out. Uh, if you look at the histogram there, they're right to the far right hand side. But that just goes to show you how much light pollution I'm dealing with here. Um, so what we can do is actually go into Photoshop on the, the computer that's uh, that's running the camera and have a look at these files as they're as they're taking. Okay, so let's look at the third last one because obviously something's happening with the uh, the latest frame. I'll go have a look at that in a minute. Let's see if we can salvage this. Yeah, so I just need to move this guy out of the way. Okay, I'm not going to make any initial adjustments. I'm just going to open the file here and do a uh, levels adjustment. Just to see what we're working with here. it to the orientation I like and now this should make a big difference here yeah okay we're good nothing's being clipped on the right hand side that's good we're, we've pushed this exposure to the to the max it looks like okay so now I can see that it is framed up nicely the horse the horse heads pretty much right in the center there and there's some uh, vignetting and some gradients uh, those will be handled afterwards with uh, using flats and uh, in the processing. Um, and we can do another quick check here by setting the gray point. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so now we can see the pink from the horse head. And we're just going to stretch it like that. Okay, so this is the basis for the uh, the image here, and as, as you can see, a single frame is just horrible. Um, a lot of factors roll into that for sure, but um, this I've seen worse, and uh, we're going to work with it.